Hi everyone, this is Brian Daly from DNA Music Labs. I'm here to announce a new feature for our Pro Tools controller, the Hotkey Matrix. We've now made it easy for Mac users to customize commands using a new app called the HKM Customizer. I'm excited to show how this works and to talk a little bit about some of the philosophy and use cases for the app. If you're not familiar with Hotkey Matrix, it's a dedicated hardware controller for Pro Tools. It has 144 keys and each key is mapped to a single Pro Tools command. Customization has been a long requested feature and it's something we haven't focused on even though the hardware has always allowed for customization in part because the Hockey Matrix has a very particular philosophy which contrasts with a lot of other controllers. It comes as a fully pre-programmed controller. It's labeled. It also does not require any extra software to run which means it's really lightweight and can be used in almost any other Pro Tools environment with other software protocols like Yukon or Huey or other hardware-based controllers. So we really wanted to make sure that any customization feature we added did not detract from the simplicity and user friendliness of the device. With that, let me show you how you can easily assign new menu commands to the keys on the hotkey matrix. We'll go over here and we are going to open up this app called HKM Customizer. And you'll see here on the screen a graphical representation of the layout of the hotkey matrix with certain keys in color. So anywhere you see a colored square means that represents a key you can customize. I have three commands I want to add to the hotkey matrix. In essence, I'm going to substitute them for some commands that I'm not using so much right now. So I'm going to work with these keys right here. These are the send A, B, and C keys, and I'm going to assign them new commands. The keys we want are right here, starting with a uh, key we labeled D7, which is row D, column 7. The first command I want to add is split track into mono. So to do that, I'm going to click on the key. It tells me that the current menu command on that key is send A. And I just click here, this highlighted button, which says customize assignment. And now I pick the menu that the command is from, the new command, track, and the command itself split into mono. Hit OK. And now I get a dialog saying I have assigned the Pro Tools menu command track split into mono to hockey matrix key D7. Hit OK. We're done. The next command I want to use is separate at transient from the edit menu. So click there. I'm going to choose edit for the menu. The edit menu has a lot of commands. So I'm going to look down for the one I want. Separate clip at transients. Highlight it. Click OK. And the last command I want to do is assign the audio suite command for reverse to my third key. So I choose audio suite menu, and now I'm going to look for it. It's labeled Avid reverse because it's an Avid audio suite plugin. Click OK, and now I've done that. So let's check if these assignments have really worked. I'm going to open Pro Tools. Okay, I've got a couple loops, and uh, we're going to do some creative editing here using our new commands that we've assigned. First, we're going to split our stereo track into mono using this key. Press the key. There we go. We've got two mono tracks. Next, we are going to do the separate on transients. We get a little dialog asking for a pre-separate value, one millisecond. And now we're going to get a little creative with the reverse command from the audio suite menu. Okay. Let's do the same thing with the left side of the loop. So again, we'll press this key here to trigger the separate at transient edit command. I'm just kind of randomly picking some loop slices. Let's do a couple more. And the reverse audio suite plugin is still open, so we'll just use that. All right, now let's take these two mono tracks. We'll just slide the regions back up to our stereo track. And that's going to be our new loop.
we can delete these tracks with the hotkey matrix command. Convenient, delete tracks. Now let's do a similar type of editing on our stereo guitar loop here. We'll split it into mono. Got some slices. Okay, select these and put them back on our stereo track. And so there we have a little example of a hypothetical workflow in which I wanted to substitute for some of the default commands on the hotkey matrix for ones which would fit with my current task. So one of the things you might have noticed there was that I did my command customization while Pro Tools was not open. And you can use the Customizer app to customize while Pro Tools is open. It does have one slight difference. It works exactly the same, but you'll see the interface do an extra step. So let's say we want to assign a new command to this key. Select that, Customize Assignment, and we're going to go to the Setup menu. And we'll do Setup. I.O. Okay. So my actions are exactly the same. The extra little step you see when the interface is moving is just needed when Pro Tools is open so that the assignments stick. All right, so let's go check and see if our new command worked. So if it works correctly, when I push this key, I should get my I.O. setup window, which I do. Now I'll show you how I've got my own hockey matrix set up. There's a handful of keys that I have customized using the Customizer app, and I'd also like to share with you some perspective on the subject of user interface customization in general and the hockey matrix in particular. So one of the main issues is labeling, and I have found to make effective use of this kind of keyboard shortcut tool, I can't remember too many generically labeled commands. I do use a lot of macro software and have some keyboards that I use to trigger stuff. And I could probably remember five or six macros or shortcuts that I programmed on the fly. After that, I start to forget. And if I forget what I have programmed on the key, it really kind of blows the efficiency of the workflow away. So labels are pretty important. They help you learn and memorize shortcuts so much faster. And so I've gone ahead and started making labels for some of the many commands in Pro Tools. And I've made a template, which I'll share with users. Uh, over time, I expect to fill those labels in. Essentially, I just print them out on an inkjet printer on white paper and put them under the clear plastic keycap. I really do find that the hockey matrix covers the vast majority of my functionality, so it wasn't like there was a lot of commands I was missing. But I'll show you some of the ones that I picked that have been useful to me. So I have a shortcut for the MIDI editor lane that shows at the bottom of the edit window, which is an alternate type of MIDI editor. There's also still the normal shortcut for the MIDI editor window. And depending on what I'm doing, I like to use one or the other. I've got a shortcut to show hide clip name. That's a command from the uh, view menu. Got a key dedicated for the separate it transient and reverse clip that I showed you in the last section. Um, some right to current automation or some trim shortcuts. And this is the bypass insert command, which is pretty handy for checking out your processing. You know, but obviously there's a lot of commands and you're never going to be able to get them all on there. So currently what I'm doing is I've dedicated two keys for sort of on the fly reprogramming labeled user one and user two. And for example, they're currently set to switch the solo mode. So if you press one, you've got the solo latch and you press user two, it'll switch back to XOR solo mode. If I'm tracking, I like to be able to switch on delay compensation or switch on and off low latency monitoring. So I can just quickly go over to the customizer here and reprogram those keys. So those are what's on the option menu and I'm going to go to program this for delay compensation. Okay. And I'll set this one up.
So now I can turn on and off delay compensation, low latency monitoring. Just to quickly show you, they're both on. Now they're both off. One of the current limitations of this first beta version is that there's sort of this somewhat random selection of keys that you can use to customize. And the reason for that is that I didn't want to change the fundamental operation of how the hotkey matrix works. At core, it's a dedicated hardware controller, and each key is dedicated to a single command. And one of the important things is that it doesn't require any software to run, so you don't have to have the customizer app open to use the shortcuts. You can close it, and they work exactly the same. So it remains a very lightweight tool on your system. And uh, the hardware supports more extensive customization um, using a Windows utility. But since most of our users are Mac users, I wanted to provide a way that they could just very quickly and easily do some customization without having to delve too deep into it. If you're a Pro Tools Windows user, or if you have regular access to a Windows machine, you can use the uh, Cherry Tools designer utility that comes with the hotkey matrix and all of the keys are available for programming. There's many more commands you can assign, and I'll be doing a video to illustrate that coming soon. One of my philosophies in thinking about user interfaces is first, do no harm. I feel like too many tools that are designed to enhance your workflow wind up making more work for you. And it's been a high priority for the Hockey Matrix to remain a tool that is a high level of usability, a low level of complex abstraction, is very lightweight, and doesn't detract from your existing workflow. So the customizer app is a way to customize the hockey matrix without sacrificing any of those design principles. That's a rather long-winded way to talk about why the particular keys are used. Essentially, the keys that you see in color are keys that can be customized without changing any of the core functionality of the hockey matrix. And the whole thing about customizability is that it's really a double-edged sword. I find that too many of these sort of small format control surfaces are kind of put out there in the marketplace and the designers really haven't thought through, how is this really going to integrate with someone's workflow? Is this going to make their life easier or not? And instead of really delving into what functionality do we need, they decide, well, we'll just make this thing that the user can customize. And so customization is a feature, but it can also be a sort of a form of laziness on the part of the interface designer. And for anyone that's relatively new to the hockey matrix, I don't really recommend getting into customization right away. It's a highly functional device as it comes. You know, it has 144 commands. It'll keep you occupied for a long time. And as you get used to how it works and how the device is laid out, then you can judiciously use the customizer app to enhance the tool for your particular workflow. Okay, thanks for checking it out. You can get in touch with us at dnahockeymatrix at gmail.com and just say you're interested in checking out the beta of the customizer app. And thanks a lot for watching and listening.